Hey, I've got an idea, or maybe it's a proof of concept. Either way, I wanna show you in this video. Now this idea comes from a problem that I face on a regular basis in the professional work that I do, where I often find myself in various office buildings or towers or different set locations all across the city. And this poses a unique challenge of actually getting equipment to that site. So I've got to strike a balance between the filmmaking gear that I would like to take with me to the set to get my shot and the actual logistics of getting it to the site. And I'm sure someone can relate to that. So this idea that I've been alluding to is quickly becoming my favorite source of soft light that helps me strike that balance. It just requires one C stand. Let's check it out. There you go. This is it. This is my idea, my favorite source of soft light all on one C stand. Now, before we break down exactly how I built this contraption, let's, let's lay the foundation for what I'm looking for in my lighting. Now, all of that is built on this, this value of mine as a filmmaker, as a cinematographer, as a storyteller to try to be invisible. You know, I don't want my camera movements. I don't want my lighting techniques. I don't want my edits to take away from the story that's being told. I want to take my viewer on a journey. I want them to forget that they're watching a video. So if I can be invisible, I've done my job. With that being the foundation, that's going to give way to a couple prerequisites for what would become one of my go-to light sources for lighting interviews or commercial work. Now, that first prerequisite was that I wanted this source to be very large and very soft. I wanted it to be just a, a gentle hug of light. Now, anyone that works with me knows that I truly dislike when the light feels sourcey. That's the word I'm always using is sourcey. I don't want something to feel or look lit because that takes away from being invisible and that authenticity when it feels like it's very staged. I want it to feel authentic. And because I want it to feel not sourcey, I wanted to opt for prerequisite number two, which is a rectangular light source, especially if I'm shooting indoors because most of the time when we're indoors, we're usually lit from an overhead source that really sucks. But every now and again, we happen to be next to a big soft window. It's not very often that we're lit by circular sources indoors. So again, speaking to the authenticity of the way I want to light, I wanted something that might replicate a large window. So I wanted it to be rectangular. And that third prerequisite for a go-to light source for me was that it needed to be mobile. For all the reasons we talked about in the intro, this needed to be collapsible and transportable in a way that I can get it in and out of all these different locations that I find myself in into parking garages and ultimately into my subcompact car. Yes, the six and a half foot tall YouTuber drives a subcompact car because gas mileage and stuff. So, so those are the prerequisites. Let's take a look at what this thing actually is. I've broken down this lighting rig to fit into the case that I transport it in and out of location with, and that is the Matthews 3C stand rolling case. All right, this entire rig fits into that case with extra room for my tripod, for an auxiliary light stand, a boom arm, some knuckles and super clamps, and other miscellaneous equipment. We'll start by taking out a very specific C stand from the case, and that is the Savage Double Riser C stand. This is the backbone of the rig that makes this thing even exist. It was the inspiration for the idea. And what's unique about this stand, one of the legs has been fitted with a junior pin receiver. And the kit includes a custom fitted riser to go into that slot, which gives us two true mounting points on this one single C-stand. The next thing we'll do is break out our light source. I'm using the Aperture 600D Pro. This could be any point light source that you have. I would recommend though getting something with some power because we're ultimately creating a vertical book light here, which means we're going to be bouncing and then diffusing our light. And in that exchange, we end up losing some of our light. So we want something with enough power to properly expose our images. We'll slot our light fixture onto the short riser stand, and then we'll attach our ballast to the center column as low as we can get it. This keeps our center of gravity and our weight low. And in turn, we get a nice and stable rig. This is where things start to get interesting because we're going to build our vertical book light now. And we're gonna use a Westcott scrim gym system to do so. This is a really great system for this because it's a series of modular tubes and connectors and adapters. You can build any number of different modifier shapes that you might need. In this situation, we're gonna build a four x four frame. With our frame still on the ground, we're gonna add our first sheet of material and that is going to be the Westcott Ultra Bounce. Now I'm using a four x six, you could use a four x four as well. I just had a four x six, so that's, that's what I went with. Now, 
The reason I went with the Westcott system is because all of their materials also have a Velcro strip attached to the outer perimeter, which makes it super easy to attach the material, whatever it is, to the actual frame itself. There's no tying, there's no bongo ties, nothing. It's just very easy, it's very convenient, very efficient and effective. That was a lot of adjectives, but I, I do, I, I thoroughly enjoy this system. So that's why I went with it. It makes this process very easy. Staying true to the system, I'm going to use the Westcott Scrim Gym to grip head adapter and attach that to the bottom center of my 4x4 frame that I just built and then attach that to the top of my C-stand. This next part is where I start to get excited because as you can tell, we, we've effectively diffused our light source once. We've taken our point light source and spread it and bounced it across a 4x4 frame. And that very well could be an adequate light source. It's, it's gonna be softer than just the point light source itself. But, and this is where the, the Westcott Scrim Gym system comes into play, the Velcro is on both sides of that frame. So now I'm going to take my four by six material and I'm using a four by six half grid. This is my favorite diffusion material out there. And I'm going to simply Velcro the top strip to the top of my four x four frame and let it just hang and let gravity do the work for me. And that effectively gives us our book light. We've got our point light source that is bouncing through a four x four ultra bounce, which is then coming back through a four x six sheet of half grid. And this is what ultimately becomes our light source. You can tell just how evenly we have that light spread across this entire sheet of half grid. There's a little bit of a hot spot here in the center, but for the most part, it's pretty uniform. So. I'm excited about this. If we go back to our prerequisites, we know that we wanted a source that was going to be large and soft. There are a couple reasons that we want a large light source. The first of which is it helps to keep our light from feeling too sourcey. We talked about that earlier. A larger source keeps it from feeling spotty. The next reason is that the larger the light source, the softer the quality of light will be. And the third reason is it helps us to better light a subject from head to toe. Now, I'm six and a half feet tall, and this source is still doing a pretty good job of getting me full coverage from just an arm length away. One of the problems with circular soft boxes is they tend to focus that light into a smaller area. And then it's only effective oftentimes from the waist up, which depending on your interview that you're doing, that might be adequate. But if you need to light somebody from head to toe, then you have to move your light source back and then it becomes a harder source on them. So that's not the best scenario. So we've got a nice large source here. Our second prerequisite was we wanted something that was going to be rectangular to better mimic, say, a window light. We've got that. And our third prerequisite was we wanted something that was going to be mobile. And you just saw it. This whole thing can pack down into one case with room to spare for other accessories, and it all fits on one C-stand. So the question that we have to answer now is, is this rig worth it? because it does take a little bit more time to get set up than a traditional collapsible softbox, and it does cost a little bit more money. So in order for this to make sense, it has to provide some characteristics, some benefit that's going to outweigh some of those drawbacks. I'll let you decide, let's compare. I wanted to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison so you can really see what this type of light quality looks like in comparison to the more traditional travel option, which is going to be a collapsible softbox. I'm using the Aperture Light Dome here on the left, and then on the right side, you're seeing my lighting rig. I'm not here to tell you that one is right and one is wrong, or one is better than the other. I'm not even here to tell you that soft light is always gonna be the answer. Going back to that initial concept we talked about where we wanted to be invisible as filmmakers and we wanted to create authentic images we have to decide what the right light quality is going to be to best tell our story and to evoke a feeling or emotion out of our viewer. This just happens to be a quality of light that I really like. When I see it, I just, I love the way that it wraps around the face and, and the, the qualities that we get because of it and the versatility and the benefits that come with having a source as large as this and one that is is somewhat compact and can be taken with me on my different locations throughout the city now this lighting rig is, is far from perfect but i think we've got a valid proof of concept here and there's a couple problems that i have with it and i want us to draw on the experience that i know that we have in this community and get your guys' opinions down in the comments as to how we might address some of these problems or maybe there's one that i'm not even thinking of again let's 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 hash this out let's see what we can come up with now that first problem that i have is the excess light spill that comes from this current configuration. 
because I've got that reflector dish on there. There is light that spills out of the left and right side of the bounce, and some of that also makes its way into the background, and it's not a problem on every set, but sometimes that could be a problem. So I don't have a great way to flag off some of this ambient light spiller help to control that. So that's that's kind of one issue that I'm, I'm working through with, with this setup. The other one is that I'm using that Savage C-Stand, uh, but in this configuration, the C-Stand feet are in the wrong orientation to best support the load that's on it. If you've used C-Stands for any amount of time, you know that you want the tall, the longest leg to be directly under the load. But because I'm taking advantage of the riser stand, to bounce my light off of the ultra bounce, my my legs are not in the proper orientation. Granted, it's not very top heavy and, and the load is very uh, well centered for the most part. It's likely not going to topple over, but it is less than ideal. So if we were to take this to the next level, putting the riser on the actual longest, the tallest leg would be ideal um, is, is my solution to that problem. But again, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. And the last problem that I have, having used this for the last couple months, is that once you get it set up on location, it's not particularly easy to move around. You know, if you have to go 10 feet, that's not a big deal. But if you needed to move this to a different room, uh, you might have to break it down a little bit to get through doors, what have you. Um, wheels would be great, but then that's one more thing to carry with you. I don't know what the answer is. There might not be an answer, but just, just be aware of that. If you decide to build yourself one of these uh, and use it, that's going to be another problem you're going to run into is, is actually maneuvering this thing. So there you have it. That is my idea, and it is becoming one of my favorite sources of soft light. I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.